What is up everyone? I've had a lot of people asking me about networking part five and yes it is coming and I could give you all the excuses under the sun but whatever. One of those excuses is there were a couple of stepping stones that I needed to cross before making networking series uh, part five and one of those stepping stones probably the biggest one is this guy this guy is going to play quite a big role in part five um, for various reasons you can kind of maybe figure it out for yourselves um, but this is my time capsule and not to be confused with my airport extreme which is staying downstairs as the main downstairs access point um, this is the time capsule that i bought from dave uh, geekanoids a few months ago and unfortunately pretty much as soon as i unboxed it and set it up um, probably about half an hour, 40 minutes later, the hard drive died, which is kind of a shame. Um, I didn't contact Dave about it because this is a used product. It was blatantly working when he sent it out. It was working when I first set it up. It's just one of those things, luck of the draw. Hard drives are hard drives. And I really sort of didn't mind um, because I knew that I could make a fun video replacing it in the future. So I am 99% certain that this hard drive is dead. And because I want this guy to play a bigger role in my home network um, during the upgrades in part five, I need this to be fully operational. Now, I could still use this for what I want to use it for with a dead hard drive, but it means that the downtime when I want to replace this in the future, if I wasn't to do this now, the downtime would impact my internet access um, because essentially I'll be using this as my router from part five onwards. And uh, there are a few reasons for that. All will be explained. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a fun part. There are going to be loads of cool things happening. But anyway, yeah, today we're just going to focus on the replacement of the hard drive. As I say, 99% sure it's dead. Uh, I've tried everything under the sun and nothing seems to get it to fire up. So we're going to replace the drive with one of these bad boys. This is a Western Digital Red 3 terabyte. And the reason I went for the 3 terabyte is because at the moment, in my opinion, the 3 terabyte is the best bang for your buck. It's only slightly more expensive than the two terabyte, but it's quite a bit cheaper than the four terabyte. So it's like that really nice middle ground. The four terabyte, if you want four terabyte drives, it's a great price. It's a good time to buy a four terabyte drive, but overall weighing it all up, the three terabyte made the most economical sense to me at this moment in time, especially considering this is just a bonus drive. I don't really mind about what storage this guy has. It was originally a two terabyte time capsule, so it's gonna be a terabyte bigger, which is nice, but it's not a crucial part of my storage solution. It's just a nice little bit of bonus storage. Um, I could have gone really crazy and shoved an eight or a 10 terabyte in this guy and used it to back up all of my other drives. I did consider it, but we're gonna do something much better than that down the line, and that moment of madness quickly passed, thank God. So what I'll probably be using this for in this um, little period of time, at least this side of part five, is time machine for my MacBook Pro and Jess's MacBook Pro, and potentially a couple more Macs around the house. Um, but that won't even come close to the three terabytes anyway. Jess and I both have 250 gig drives in our MacBook Pros. And um, yeah, that, our data won't even come close to filling this guy. So there'll be a lot of potential with this and it will be handy, but it'll only be spare storage in the future. One other thing that I wanna to quickly touch on before we get started is after the last repair video, I looked at that laptop. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. You probably have though, because it was the first video that I uploaded in months. <laughs> um, since that video, I decided to treat myself to a few new toys because I was looking at that video and I was like, oh, Tom, you really, really need some new toys. Uh, so first things first, I treated myself to a nice, generously large ice cube tray for screw organization, um, which will definitely come in handy. I treated myself to this lovely anti-static mat. Say what you will about static, but why the heck not? It comes with this gorgeous little um, uh, earth cable coming out of the bottom here, and it ends in a nice crocodile clip, or you can just yank it off the crocodile clip to be able to plug it straight in, which is really cool. That's what I'll be doing. Um, yeah, this, this, this whole setup is a little bit shambolic. I also treated myself to a nice new screwdriver set with all of the new bits 
that I don't have. So this set includes all the bits for the iPhones and stuff. Um, and it's just nice to have a nice driver. I've got a few of the cheapo drivers that I've had with iPhone replacement parts, uh, but it's nice to have a, a proper one. This is magnetic and it's got a bendy bit and an extendy bit and a nice bit and a nice case and everything. So yeah, a couple of treats. I was looking at that video and I was like, oh man, Tom, you're not looking good, man. Your supplies are not looking good. So yeah, bit of an update there, bit of a treat. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to make me any more efficient at creating these videos or doing these repairs, but it's nice. <laughs> So let's dig into our brand new WD Red Drive and this is going to be a little bit of a, a taster of things to come on the channel because I have managed to um, shift around my finances and funds in such a way that I am able to spend a nice chunk of money on something that I should have bought years and years ago and that is a very reliable and sturdy NAS with plenty of storage space for all of my files. So I'm hoping at some point during 2018 I will make the plunge and put significant money into uh, the NAS. But for this moment in time we're just going to concentrate on the time capsule and not get ahead of ourselves. So we've got one brand new Western Digital 3TB RED drive. And before we put it into the time capsule, because this is going to be a little bit of a uh, an awkward drive swap, I think. Um, so before we put the drive in and then figure out that it's dead, we're going to test the drive out. So at the moment, I've got a drive in the toaster. I'm just going to eject that drive into one of my archive discs, which is something that I really need to get away from. And uh, the NAS will help me with that most definitely. So the toaster is out of frame at the moment, it's in my server rack, but take my word for it folks, I will be toastering this new drive in due course. So here is archive disk 3 retrieved from the toaster. And in case you guys aren't familiar with what that means, basically as a very short term measure I started buying 2 terabyte WD green drives to offload all of my data onto and I'm now on my third one with nearly six terabytes of video data from the last few years. And that was only ever meant to be a temporary couple of months solution, but it ended up being my permanent way of storing old video projects. So I am definitely looking forward to the NAS when that happens. Okay, come on buddy. Hey, perfect, so the disc is recognized. Um, we'll be able to re-erase it in the airport utility when it's in the time capsule, so I'm not too concerned about that. What we're going to do is just quickly format it now so that we can drag a file to it and drag a file from it just as, you know, total confirmation that the drive is indeed working. Okay, let's have a look. So we have got, uh, I guess, this guy. Yeah, 3 terabyte, uninitialized. So we're going to erase and we're not going to really call it anything, we're just arrays because as I say we can re-arrays in, um, in the airport utility, that's not a problem. Okay so the disk is successfully erased and of course it's asking me if I want to use it as a time machine disk. I'll press don't use because I kind of do but not in the way that it is now so <laughs> don't want to confuse matters. So here we have the drive. All I'm gonna do is just drag a file to it and just see if it works and it definitely does work. So we're gonna be okay. Ah, I've got a DMG for Adobe Reader. <laughs> Let's pop that on the drive. That transferred just fine. Let's delete it from the drive and empty the trash. Yeah, the drive is working fine, folks. So we can eject this drive and we can get out of here and we can continue the process. So the first and potentially hardest part of this uh, little project is going to be probably opening this guy up. So according to the guide there are apparently cables that are too close for com comfort at the front and back. That's exactly what it says. So it says start at the sides and it's one of these Apple products that upon first glance looks as if it's never ever going to open a little bit like the first generation Mac Minis but just like the first generation Mac Minis the tactic is shove something in the side 
and pry it the hell open. So that is exactly what we're going to do. And I mean, it's very vague. It's like put it in, make sure it's in far enough, but don't put it in too far and all this sort of thing. Don't do it too rough, otherwise you break the plastic and oh yeah, I see what it means. Okay, this is not going to be easy, folks. Uh, let's try and pry this bad boy open. <laughs> Definitely not something I'd want to be doing all the time. Hey, so we have got the base of the time capsule off. So total, it has 12 little clips around the outside and that wasn't too bad at all really. Um, all things considered, that was okay. So let's put that over there safe and we are now in to the bottom of the time capsule, which is cool. So this is actually quite a dense and very, very tightly designed product. This is a lump of electronics here in this sort of square plastic cylinder. <laughs> square plastic cylinder. It's just a bit of a bonkers design, but nice and compact. When these first came out, I was shocked that there was actually a full-size desktop hard drive in them, but they obviously get it in there by it being completely sideways. Okay, so excitement is definitely brewing because this is my first time using my new fancy screwdriver. So, Torx T8 bit, and look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, ice cube tray. Folks, I couldn't get more professional if I tried. This is what it's all about. Look at that, very professional looking screwdriver, professional handling of screws. My word, what has happened? Doesn't feel quite right, but I'm just gonna go with it. See where things take me. Okay, so that's those four removed. And what next? It does say that once the four screws are removed, this metal plate will just... Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, so there's the little metal plate. I'll try and get a better view for you guys into the uh, into the time capsule. Okay, that should be a little bit better for you guys. You should be able to see a bit more of what's going on. So, random metal plate removed. Power cable. And we've got one more thing to do by the looks of it. Next up, it looks like we've got to remove some cabling from the PCB. <laughs> Fair amount of dust in here, folks. So to do this, uh, yes, I can see there is some delicate cabling in there, most definitely. So let's take a little look and make sure we don't screw it up. What is that dangling away from there? Don't know if that's any good. Aha, uh -huh, I think I may have broken that, okay. So check this out, folks. Firstly, I think I may have broken it already. <laughs> There's this little wire dangling here, which I believe goes to an antenna. And I could have ripped that off while I was bludgering around. Um, we'll see about that later on, though. Uh, if you look in here, we've got three small connectors to remove. Um, there's this big connector here, and then there are two more connectors down here. It's actually easier to see it in this photograph on iFixit. And what I'm going to do now is um, attempt to remove these three connectors. So, yes, this big connector shouldn't be too bad, but those smaller ones are going to be fairly difficult. So, uh, plastic spudger and some tweezers definitely needed. And... Uh, little bit of a steady hand, wish me luck. So this connector came off really easy because it's big and it slides upwards towards the bottom of the device. So these two connectors, that I'll shine my light on now, these are a different story because they come out off the top of the board, so this way towards me. And it's a little bit more awkward because they're such small connectors. So what I'm gonna have to do is um, kind of get my um, plastic pry tool here and try and s kind of pop them off the board um, without hopefully breaking anything further. So 
let's see how we go. Well, I thought I'd broken another connector. I thought I'd pinged a wire off one, but thankfully it was just this bit of dust that flew towards me when I when it pinged off. Um, the most effective way was, as it said on iFixit, get a small something or other behind the wires and pop them off that way. God knows how I'm going to get them back on. Um, anyway, that's that. So we've got a total of four different things dangling from the bottom of this time capsule now, which is cool. Um, let's see what the next step is, which I believe is yanking this thing off, but we're not going to go any further because this is harder than I thought it would be. What does it say? Okay, yeah, we can unpeel this. Okay, there we go. Sweet. And do we pull it completely off? I'm assuming we have to. There we go. So that is really tight in there, and that's for some nice um, isolation. Very nice thick rubber dampening the drive. Um, two little layers around here, very, very spongy, in order to stop the drive from vibrating and shaking the hell out of this thing. So we've actually got some progress now. After all of that craziness, we can finally see the bottom of the drive. So here is the drive. You can see the connectors, and uh, you can now see the way in which the airport is laid out. It's quite clever. Um, but yeah, definitely very compact and, and difficult to work inside. So we should be at a fairly easy part, um, at least maybe easy in comparison to the other parts. Um, we've now got to pry this connector from the drive. It is a completely kind of flat connector um, and it's kind of tiny. There's two little sides that can come up. I think the easiest for this guy will definitely be Definitely be the old tweezers. Let's see what we can do. See if we can pry the... There's one side lifted. A little bit. There we go. So there is the SATA connector removed, which is kind of on a little sort of riser board thing. Quite interesting. Um, and now, with all of this stuff free, we can remove the drive, which should just slide out. It's pretty tight fit. But there it is. Wow. Okay, cool. Lovely. That is the drive removed from the time capsule. And yes, indeed. <laughs> it's still fairly heavy even without the drive. The drive is not the heaviest part, so that's cool. What I'm now going to do is have a quick little look at this ripped connector and see what I can do about that. So, folks, it's not an antenna that I've broken. It's actually the reset button. So I've managed to slide the tiny little button out of the casing. It just gets held into this little cradle here and one of the two wires is broken. This will be a really easy fix uh, to just be solder it back on but I do not have um, my soldering gear here with me, which is a shame. And uh, I probably wouldn't be able to do it anyway. It's very, very small and I've got terrible eyesight, but I don't even have uh, my soldering stuff here to give it a go, which is a shame. So what I can try and do right now is stick it back on um, with electrical tape, which is not a permanent solution. But luckily, if I want to fix this again better in the future, I can just pop the bottom casing off. I don't have to remove anything else. It'll be fairly easy to remove. You know, I won't have to remove the drive or any of the connectors from the board or whatever. So it's not such a bore ache. Um, so I'm just gonna have a little fiddle with this right now and see how far I can get with it. All right, guys, so the reset button is a bit of a lost cause at this moment in time. So what I've done is I've uh, unplugged it from the board. It's just this tiny little header and there's the reset button itself. And also, I've got the button, the plastic button for the casing, which is equally minuscule. So I'm gonna put those there and I'll bag them up in one of those small little seal bags, label it up and put it somewhere. Um, so if the worst comes to the worst and I cannot reset this without the hardware reset button, I can always crack the bottom off and bridge those connectors. It's not a massive deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, still a bit annoyed though. I, I can't really see how I would have ripped that off because I was very careful. I was doing it sideways. I didn't go too deep. I may have, you know, maybe I did. I don't know, but 
I really, yeah. it's, it's hard to say folks, it is hard to say, but there we go. I obviously ripped it off. Um, wouldn't have fallen off on its own, that's okay. Um, it could have been worse things to damage. So anyway, uh, let's move on to the drive and we'll forget about the reset button. Uh, I pulled out the Seagate 2000 gig or two terabyte uh, drive. Here it is. And obviously I'm gonna replace it with the red. Now, here comes the next tricky part. It may not fit. I'm gonna give it a go first without trimming. Um, we got all these little bits of rubber and certain drives you have to trim it. Uh, you have to trim the rubber so that it gets in the case. I'm just going to try and wham it in without trimming the rubber and see see how far we get with that. No chance, folks. No chance whatsoever. So here it is. They sit in the time capsule like this. The drive sits in here. And there is a noticeable difference. These Seagate drives, they thin right out at the bottom. And this one does not. So we have got to cut about, I don't know, three mil from here and try and do it evenly, I guess. And uh, yeah, then the drive should sit nicely in the time capsule. After a quick cutting session, we have got a rather rough looking but quite functional seal on the old rubber bits here. So the easiest thing to do will be to place these back down into the time capsule and then slide the drive in. All right, guys, I just had a nice little break for lunch. I know this video has got lots of cuts here, there and everywhere. I do apologize for that, but this is a bit of a process. Um, so looking at this, we're going to have to make some trims to this as well, because let's just have a little look and see. Uh, yeah, this fits perfectly on top of this drive. Um, but this drive is a fair bit thinner than the Western Digital Drive. Um, I think if I just pretty much chop off um, most of what's going on this end and trim a little bit of that end, then we should be good to go. Um, so let's trim this bit off. Holy crap. That was, needless to say, fairly intense. <laughs> oh man. There we go. One time capsule. My word folks. So definitely the hardest part about reassembly without a shadow of the doubt was reconnecting these two connectors. Uh, uh, let's have a look. Let's get a better, better picture of them because that's not, that's a weird angle. There you go. These two connectors. Definitely the hardest part about putting this back together. Very, 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 very tiny. But we are back together, thank God. And uh, I really do apologize that I didn't show much of the reassembly and it was a very jump cut video. Um, the thing is, I would like to let the camera just run, but I struggle with battery and storage in this particular camera. Um, so it's kind of difficult and this took me a long time because between fiddling around, tweezers, little plastic bit, magnifying glass, trimming off more and more little bits of rubber, um, that was very difficult, but quite rewarding if it works. And I'm very gutted about the reset switch. Uh, that's a big shame. Yeah, I got the power port back in, nicely aligned, good. Um, yeah, pretty gutted about that because, oh, you know, it just means that it's an incomplete repair because I've repaired one thing but broken another but that's okay um, the hard drive is a much more important part and uh, hopefully I can just plug this in and we can test it out so I'm gonna have a little bit of a uh, tidy up uh, clear the workspace and then we will we will yeah moment of truth man I'm so, I so hope it works so I've just plugged him in and um, there he is sitting where he belongs the cables aren't very long, so I wasn't able to like have it here and drag it out further or anything. Uh, I'm really hoping that I don't need that reset button. I am so hoping. So, uh, yeah, let's just wait for it to show up, I guess. We've got a blinking orange light and oh yes, there it is. Good. The fact that it's shown up is a really good thing because um, that, you know, eliminates a few problems. 
And what we're going to do now is erase the drive. Awesome. So it sees the three terabyte drive. We're going to erase that drive and we're going to call it um, time capsule. We'll do a quick erase because it's a brand new drive and erase. Continue. And now we'll just wait for it to do its thing. Okay, folks, we have a green light, as you can see, green light on the hardware as well, which is good. And uh, if we just go into Finder, you guys can see that we have got, if you check it out, I'm in CHQ. Uh, there's my router, plus NetHub One. <laughs> yeah, I make all the jokes every single bloody video. Um, it really confuses me in Lion because I'm accustomed to having my disks and stuff at the top of the Finder sidebar. Anyway, uh, there's my router, there's my server, and there is the time capsule. So I'm in CHQ, and there you go, time capsule. That's what we named the share or named the disk. And let's transfer a file. Here we have my wallpaper, Nintendo Switch wallpaper. Drop it on there. Will it transfer? Yes, I had to think about it for a while, but it is well and truly transferred. So in theory, I should now be able to go into a different system and see that wallpaper. Let's do this wallpaper as well. There you go, yeah, much quicker now, cool. So I'm gonna boot up my other system, and we know it works anyway, but let's just check it out regardless. Check it out, I'm in CHQ, time capsule, and the two wallpapers that I had on the iMac. There we go. So, absolutely sorted. And if we delete here, delete, they should disappear from here. They do indeed. So, it is working. Fantastic. And this will now enable us to, um, this will now enable us to take the next step in networking part five, because I needed that to be fully working and not blinking orange. So we've got the Seagate drive in the toaster. Let's see what it does. And I've just noticed as well, I've got a red light there. I need to look at that drive. Ah, always something, always something. Okay, let's jump into disk utility and take a look at what's happening with that drive. And I need to jump into disk utility on the correct system. That would be a really good start. Interesting. OS X can't repair the disk AP swap. You can still open a copy. You can still open or copy your files. Blah, 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 blah. Back up the disk and reformat as soon as you can. Interesting that it says OS X because this system is running... Oh, OS X. <laughs> Okay, okay, no problem, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so, um, let's reformat it and see what it does. So, let's take a little look. Uh, here it is, and it's messed up. So, we're gonna erase it, and we don't care what we call it. For now, we'll just call it Seagate. And we'll see if it erases, because within Airport Utility, it did not want to erase the disk. Um, it kept throwing back an error and wouldn't let you complete the erase. So let's see what it does with the standard erase in Disk Utility. So the disk erased absolutely fine. I jabbed the first aid button in Disk Utility. That ran through and gave me the lovely green tick. And now I'm copying files to the disk. And it seems to be working really well. Um, it's as if all it needed was to come out with the time capsule, be erased outside of the time capsule and then back in. It could be a faulty disk though, uh, I'm not going to trust it. I'm not going to delve in and, and run any tests on the drive in this video because I don't need to use the drive for anything. But if I want to use it in something in the future, I'll give it a more vigorous testing. But just on first glance, it appears to be running absolutely fine with no problems whatsoever. So it turns out the drive is not working. Um, that well at least it will not allow me to play any content from the drive um, and also the files in the drive don't actually show up when you browse to it over the network 
Um, plus, it seems to be struggling emptying the trash now from the file that was on that drive. So, yeah, displaying some weirdness for sure. But that's okay. I uh, don't need to use the drive for anything. It's just good to be aware of the current state of it, really. Uh, so to, to finish off the video then, folks, to finish off the video, I'm gutted about this because if it hadn't have been for this, it would have been a near perfect little operation. Despite the fact I found it quite difficult, it would have been a good achievement. But I did rip this off, which is a shame. Uh, one tiny little blob of solder will solve this problem. So that needs to be done in the future. And then this needs to be clipped back on. This connector is going to be difficult, but yeah, it'll be okay. Um, I've also got the little button, which will also be difficult to put back into the case. So hmm, I can kind of see that kind of being shoved under the rug and never happening, but I'll keep that just in case. And uh, I, I should really, really reconnect it because uh, it's just, it's just rubbish if I don't really, it really is. But overall, I'm really happy with how that went. Uh, I got a new drive in my time capsule. It is working. It is larger than the other one. And overall, everything just seems to be going fine with it, which is great. Um, ah, the trash has just failed emptying. So yeah, that, that drive's not happy. So I'm gonna attempt to eject it, which is not gonna work. No, that's not working either. So it's going to be a hard power off for this drive and uh, and put it in the back of the drawer somewhere. So again, folks, apologies for the random cuts and this, that and the other in this video. It hasn't been the smoothest, most polished of videos, but it's a video nevertheless. So hope you guys have all enjoyed this little journey. We're now back up and running and one step closer to part five, networking series part five, which is going to be a big update, a big update. I'm just going to need to really, really um, get my act together and find some time to do it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.